Everyone, and welcome to the Book of Brianna podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Brianna Whiteside, and this month we are talking about becoming an uncommon believer. Can you believe we're already in the last month of Q3, which means we're one step closer to the greatest month, October, because that's my birthday month. But before we get into Q4, we have to talk about the uncommon life and how our lives as believers should reflect an uncommon nature. Now, I'm not just talking about the spiritual things. I'm talking about the natural things, the things that we can see on earth, those tangible things, those things that people see with their eyes and then they wonder, why did they get that? How did they do this thing? And then they come to you like Nicodemus in the night, like, tell me how you did this and you get to tell them about your relationship with Christ. But unfortunately, so many of us just don't live uncommon lives. As a matter of fact, we live like commoners. We live beneath our rightful inheritance. We live beneath our rightful ability as sons and daughters. We don't use our capabilities. And part of it is social training. Somehow, somewhere, I don't know why, believers have been taught to accept the status quo. Though we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, though the kingdom was unlocked to us, we have been taught, conditioned, socialized to accept all of the struggles, all of the hardships, and therefore cause our lives to stutter. And we never step into greatness on this side of heaven. I don't know about you, but just getting uh, the heavenly rewards is just not enough for me. It's not enough. And I say that respectfully because I know that we're taught to hyper-focus on heaven. And so, as a matter of fact, someone reminded me, Brianna, the Bible says that our riches, you know, are, are laid up for us in heaven. And I'm like, yeah, it does say that. But it, Jesus also tells you that he came for you to have life in that much more abundantly. He came for you to experience heaven on earth. And how would you experience heaven on earth if you don't live on earth? You don't. You don't. So we have to condition ourselves or untrain our minds to believe that all, everything is going to be fine and dandy when we get to heaven. Though it will, there is still an experience that I believe God wants to give each of us on earth. And that is the uncommon life. That is the abundant life. And I'm going to always, always, always say, hey, <laughs> we're, we're, we're wired for abundance. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom has come back for that very reason. And if you want to live in a common life, like a commoner, cool. God will allow you to do that. But the moment you say, I'm not okay with this. I'm not good with this life. You promise me more. Oh, that's when you get the attention of heaven. That's when he's like, tell me what I promised you. Go ahead. I'm listening. Let's see if you know my word. Because your Bible also tells you that he puts his word where? Above himself. That means that those words are not falling to the ground. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God never will. And you know, it's so fascinating to me that we don't stand on that version of Bible. Why is that? Why have we become so okay with living common lives? Why are we so okay with our lives looking like people who don't believe? Why are we okay with just getting by, with robbing Peter to pay Paul, which is a curse? Why are we okay with just running around a church and not experiencing power to change our own lives? Why? I want to give you a chance to contemplate that. Why? Because it's not right. Every time you settle for less than what God wants for you, it's not right. What's interesting, though, is that God would allow you to do it. Yeah, he will allow you to do it. Because you will have what you say. This is your experience. This is your life. YOLO. And if you say, I've had enough. I don't want any more. That's as far as he's going to push you. But because you were wired towards a destined end, your destiny will always call you. Your destiny will always say, hey, there's more if you just have the courage to step into it. There's more on the other side of this. So I want to know, do you want the more? Because the more is going to require something of you, and it's literally going to require that you recklessly abandon those ideologies that are not of God, those beliefs that God only wants you to suffer on this side of heaven. That's not true. And let me put a caveat here, or let's put a pause in that and say, there will be seasons of suffering for you. Trust me, I am very open and honest about my own seasons of suffering and God's name is glorified. And those are generally those, those hard seasons where he's training me, where I hate it, where I'm crying, spending it and farting all the time. Like 
please, Lord, get me out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let me not pretend that there won't be suffering. There will. But at the end of your suffering, after you've paid your time, there is a reward for you. And so many of us go through the battle and never get the spoils. Why are you battling if you're not going to get your harvest? Why? 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 Only you can answer that why. So when I first got saved, and I'm always honest about this part of my journey, I literally had this negotiation session with God. And I can't say that I knew much about the Bible. I had even read it. I knew what I heard people say, but I had not really tried to study it for myself. And I remember negotiating with God and saying, look, I'm, I don't want to be no broke believer. I don't want to be broke, busted, and disgusted because if I'm supposed to follow you, my life is supposed to drastically change. And I've seen a lot of believers whose lives have not changed. They still broke. They still, you know, are living hand to mouth. They're still doing these things that just don't appeal to me. And if I have made it this far without you, and that's in air quotes, right, because I wasn't acknowledging him, I wasn't even fully depending on him at that time, I don't want to regress. I don't want to go backwards. I don't want to be broke. I, you know, I was raised in a hood. I don't want that life. And I'm so grateful that God told me that you don't have to live that life. I, my children don't have to live that type of life. And so when we made that agreement, I said, okay. Now, there was some other stuff to find print that I didn't read. But that was enough for, to get me to sign on for myself. And when I'm thinking about my journey, my journey has not been as common as a lot of people's journey has been. It's not been as straightforward. It has not been this straight line. And that's because I had invited Christ into my life fairly early, uh, right after I got saved. And so as I've been journeying through, y'all know if you've been watching the podcast, me leaving my career, which was hard, <laughs> hard. And it's still, it's still a little ting there, a, a little ting in there. You know what I'm saying? A little sting. But what I realize now is that God was inviting me into this uncommon life. He was inviting me into the uncommon nature of him. And, you know, it's it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing because when we think about following God, sometimes even though we know in some way that it won't be easy in a straight line, we still hope it will be, right? We still hope like, He'll give me some slack, right? He'll give me some grace in this thing. And though he does give you slack and does give you grace, the journey still slaps the taste out of your mouth. And as I am navigating this career shift and this this time with God and, you know, learning who I am on this level, because, y'all, I don't know who I'm fully becoming. The, the woman I'm becoming now is so unnatural to me <laughs> she, she she she's familiar yet unfamiliar she's uncanny right it's familiar yet unfamiliar and when i now that i realized that god was saying hey go ahead and leave that that's a common life so many people have done what you've done so many people have gotten a phd become tenure track professors gotten tenure and you know done all the things hey go ahead this was common but I want to invite you into a different realm. I want to invite you into a different experience. And it's just like when he told Abraham to, what, leave your father's house and go to a land. I will show you. Abraham first had to leave. Abraham had to take God at his word and he had to leave first. And as he went, then God began to show him the land that he was, you know, going to possess. But just like Abraham, God promised me a whole lot to get me to leave. So go back and read Abraham's story. I want y'all to look at the promises that God gave Abraham that prompted him or encouraged him to go ahead and leave his father's house. Now, this is not saying that Abraham's journey was perfect. It wasn't. It had a lot of twists and turns, but Abraham went based on a promise. Hey, I am going to make you a father of many nations. I am going to do these things. And then he tells you, hey, you got to leave. In order for me to give you what I said, you have to obey and you have to step out into the unknown. And it is that promise that got Abraham into what we call our Hall of Fame fame book. He became ultimately the father of our faith. But he wouldn't have been that had he not done something uncommon. Think of Peter who had to walk on water. That is an uncommon thing. But we wouldn't remember Peter for walking on water had he not had the courage to step out of the boat. And the same is true for me. And the same is true for you. 
No, I don't. Well, I'm not at the stage where I can look back and say, oh, my God, I remember that time I left my career. I was so afraid and all of these things, blah, 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 blah. And I can tell it as a testimony because I'm still walking through the test of it. There will be that moment when I look back and say, and this is the uncommon realm that God had for me. This is the exceptional experience that he wanted to invite me into, because as I've said in other teachings, experiencing heaven on earth, that is the kingdom. The kingdom is an experience and God wants us to have that type of experience here because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the big king, we're the little kings. He's the big Lord, we're the little lords. But so many of us are unwilling to forsake the life we knew to lay hold of the life we want. And this could apply to singleness or getting married. This could apply to your career. This could apply to you creating a business. This could apply to any area of your life where you're unwilling to uh, experience the kingdom. Any area of your life. Because if God is encouraging you to step out of the boat in some area of your life, that means that there there is something better he's trying to give you. Now, you will have to experience the loss of it, though. Let me be clear. When Job 8 tells you your latter days will be greater than your former days, that what's implied in that scripture is you're going to have to give up what you know. The latter. Even if the latter isn't horrible, even if your latter days weren't, you know, just ugly, you're going to have to give up that in order to lay hold of the next. And it is in letting go of the, what has been your normal. This is where people start to struggle because transition is hard. Nothing is easy about transition. You're literally stepping out on what? A word? Yeah. Believers know that type of language. But to the undiscerning, you're looking crazy out here. You And you have to be willing to look crazy for a season. For a season, you have to be willing to look crazy and, and, and look at what your environment is telling you. Hey, you made the wrong decision. Can I be honest? There are moments in this journey where I feel like, did you miss God? Because nothing is really unfolded for you right now. Did you? Did, I mean, luckily, I had a great nest egg. And luckily, I know how to trade stocks. And luckily, I'm good at investing. But had I not done any of that, I st and I still wonder, nothing, now, by this time, something should have shaken for you. Something should have opened up for you, surely. And this is my own thoughts. This ain't what God said. It should have happened. He said things would begin to happen. But his begin looks very insignificant in our lives sometimes, right? And so as I journey through unlearning the what it feels like to be secure within myself, what it feels like to be secure within, you know, a certain system within academia, what it feels like to be secure and knowing as I am unlearning that, I'm having to also learn how to walk by faith and not by sight and not turn back around and not turn back around to something that wasn't even bad for me. It just, you know, I just couldn't go to the next level with it. I am having to learn how to live uncommon. If you don't know what uncommon is, it is literally an adjective, an adjective described nouns, and it means not ordinarily encountered. Uncommon means not ordinarily encountered. It means unusual. It means remarkable. It means exceptional. This is the life that God invites us to as believers, an exceptional life, an unusual life, a remarkable life. So I want to ask you, if you're not experiencing remarkable, exceptional in your life, could it be that you haven't willingly went far enough into the uncommon experience with God? With God, he invites us and he says there's more and there's always more with him. But our fear, our socialization, so many other things bind us to a certain level. And the level may be comfortable, but it will never be uncommon. And this is where we're going to focus our attention and our energies this month, the month of September, the month of birthing for a lot of people. We have to focus on living an uncommon life with God. And also we have to get used to and comfortable with people living in prosperity. I'm going to say it again. We have to get used to and common with believers living in prosperity because how else will we impact the kingdom? 
if we don't have the resources, the tools, the know-how, the knowledge to bring other people in? How can we, how can we do that? And so we have to stop demonizing what we don't really understand. We have to stop demonizing what we don't have. We have to get comfortable with believers succeeding like never before because we have Holy Spirit. We have the person who the Bible says will lead you into all truth, but you have to be willing to go. We have the cheat code. We have the power. We have all everything we need. It was downloaded within each of us before the foundations of the world, before we clocked in a time, God gave you everything you needed. Now, whether you allow that to happen in your life or not, that's up to you. Only you know that. But I am here to encourage you before we get into Q4 to become and embrace the uncommon lifestyle, the uncommon life of a believer, because your life should shine. Your light should shine. Your accomplishments should shine for the kingdom's sake. For the sake of the kingdom, you should be at the top of your game because we have a culture to affect. We have a culture to infiltrate. We have work to do, but you have to be willing not only just to go, but to embrace all of the promises and the blessings that God has for you as a result of accepting his son. There were rewards on this side of heaven as a result of accepting Jesus Christ and it's time for every believer to step into the uncommon life. Y'all, this is the introduction to what we're talking about this month. If you like this, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, This is also going to be on, I'm going to try to get it on Apple Music and the podcast app. And so if you want to just listen to it as you are journeying to work or wherever you may be, Go ahead and check out those places. I think it's going to be under the book of Brianna. Join my mailing list. I'll let you know all the details there. But I want you to know that God cares about your success. Hell cares about your success because they don't want you to get it. And you have to care as intimately and as deeply about your success. We're going to another level this year. And I'm not just saying this. I mean this with every fiber of my being. We are about to elevate. And those who are willing to go will go. And those who are not willing to go will fall off. And that is everyone's choice. But for you, I pray for the sake of your lineage in the kingdom that you get comfortable with embracing the uncommon life. I'll see you soon. If this has encouraged you, Share this with three friends. If you, if I said something powerful, let me know in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast, and I will see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Book of Brianna podcast. Bye.